how do groups get anything done? Right? How do you organize a group of individuals so that the output of the group is something coherent and of lasting value instead of just being chaos? And the um, economic framing of that problem is called uh, coordination costs. Uh, and a coordination cost is essentially all of the financial or institutional difficulties in arranging group output. And we've had a classic answer for coordination costs, which is if you want to coordinate the work of group, a group of people, you start an institution, right? You raise some resources. You found something. It can be private or public. It can be for profit or not profit. It can be large or small. But you get these resources together. You found an institution, and you use the institution to coordinate the activities of the group. More recently, because the cost of, of letting groups communicate with each other has fallen through the floor, and communication costs are one of the big inputs to coordination, there has been a second answer, which is to put the cooperation into the infrastructure, to design systems that coordinate the output of the group as a byproduct of the operating of the system without regard to institutional models. So that's what I want to talk about today. I'll, I'm going to illustrate it with some fairly concrete examples, but always, uh, always pointing to the broader themes. So I'm going to start by trying to answer a question that I know each of you will have asked yourself at some point or other, in which the internet is purpose-built to answer, which is, where can I get a picture of a roller skating mermaid? So, in New York City, on the first Saturday of every summer, Coney Island, our local charmingly run-down amusement park, hosts the Mermaid Parade. It's an amateur parade. People come from all over the city. People get all dressed up. Some people get less dressed up. Young and old, dancing in the streets, colorful characters, and a good time is had by all. And what I want to call your attention to is not the mermaid parade itself, charming though it is, but rather to these photos. I didn't take them. How did I get them? And the answer is I got them from Flickr. Flickr is a photo sharing service that allows people to take photos, upload them, share them over the web, and so forth. Recently, Flickr has added an additional function called tagging. Tagging was pioneered by Delicious and Joshua Schachter, which Delicious is a social bookmarking service. Tagging is a cooperative infrastructure answer to classification. Right? If I had given this talk last year, I couldn't do what I just did because I couldn't have found those photos. But instead of saying we need to hire a professional class of librarians to organize these photos once they're uploaded, Flickr simply turned over to the users the ability to characterize the photos. So I was able to go in and draw down photos that had been tagged Mermaid Parade. There were 3,100 photos taken by 118 photographers, all aggregated and then put under this nice, neat name, uh, shown in reverse chronological order, and I was then able to go and retrieve them to, to give you that little slideshow. Now, what hard problem is being solved here? And it's, it's in the most schematic possible view, it's a coordination problem. Right? There are a large number of people on the internet, a very small fraction of them have photos of the mermaid parade. How do we get those people together to contribute that work? The classic answer is to form an institution, right? to draw those people into some prearranged structure that has explicit goals. And I want to call your attention to some of the uh, some of the side effects of, of going the institutional route. First of all, when you form an institution, you take on a management problem. Right? No good just hiring employees. You also have to hire other employees to manage those employees and to enforce the goals of the institution and so forth. Second of all, you have to, you have to bring structure into place. Right? You have to have economic structure, you have to have legal structure, you have to have physical structure, and that creates additional costs. Third, Forming an institution is inherently exclusionary. You notice we haven't got everybody uh, who has a photo. You can't hire everyone in a company. Right? You can't recruit everyone into a governmental organization. You have to exclude some people. And fourth, as a result of that exclusion, you end up with a professional class. Look at the change here. We've gone from people with photos to photographers. Right? We've created a professional class of photographers whose goal is to go out and photograph the mermaid parade or whatever else they're sent out to, to, uh, to photograph. When you build cooperation into the infrastructure, which is the Flickr answer, it, you can leave the people where they are. And you, you take the problem to the individuals rather than moving the individuals to the problem. You arrange the coordination in, in the group. And by doing that, you get the same outcome without 
the institutional difficulties. You, you lose the institutional imperative. You lose the right to shape people's work when it's volunteer effort. But you also shed the institutional cost, which gives you greater flexibility. What Flickr does is it replaces planning with coordination. And this is a general aspect of these cooperative systems. Right? You'll have experienced this in your life whenever you bought your first mobile phone and you stopped making plans. You just said, I'll call you when I get there. Call me when you get off work. Right? That is a point-to-point -point replacement of coordination with planning. Right? We're now able to do that kind of thing with groups. To say instead of, we must make an advance plan, we must have a five-year projection of where the Wikipedia is going to be or whatever. You can just say, let's coordinate the group effort and let's deal with it as we go because we're now well enough coordinated that we don't have to take on the, the, the problems of deciding in advance what to do. So here's another example. This one's somewhat more somber. These are photos on Flickr tagged Iraq. And everything that was hard about the coordination cost with the mermaid parade is, is even harder here. There are more pictures. There are more photographers. It's taken over a wider geographic area. Uh, it's, the photos are spread out over a longer period of time. Uh, and uh, worst of all, that figure at the bottom, approximately 10 photos per photographer, is a lie. It's, it's mathematically true, but it doesn't really talk about anything important. Because in these systems, the average isn't really what matters. What matters is this. This is a graph of photographs tagged Iraq, as taken by the 529 photographers who contributed the 5,445 photos. And it's ranked in order of number of photos taken for, per photographer. You can see here, over the, over the end, our most prolific photographer has taken around 350 photos. And you can see there's a few people who've taken hundreds of photos. Then there's dozens of people who've taken dozens of photos. And by the time we get around here, we get 10 or fewer photos, and then this long, flat tail. And by the time you get to the middle, you've got hundreds of people who've contributed only one photo each. This is called a power law distribution. Um, it's a, it, it appears in often in unconstrained social systems where people are allowed to contribute as much or as little as they like, this is often what you get. Right? The math behind the power law distribution is that whatever's in the nth position is doing about one nth of whatever's being measured relative to the person in the first position. So we'd expect the 10th most prolific photographer to have contributed about a 10th of the photos, and the 100th most prolific photographer to have contributed only about a 100th as many photos as the most prolific photographer did. So the, the head of the curve can be sharper or flatter, but that basic math accounts both for the steep slope and for the long flat tail. And curiously in these systems, as they grow larger, the systems don't converge, they diverge more. In bigger systems, the head gets bigger and the tail gets longer. So the imbalance increases. And you can see the curve is obviously heavily left-weighted. Here's how heavily. If you take the top 10% of photographers contributing to this system, they account for three quarters of the photos taken, just the top 10% most prolific photographers. If you go down to 5%, you're still accounting for 60% of the photos. If you go down to 1%, exclude 99% of the group effort, and you're still accounting for almost a quarter of the photos. And because of this left weighting, the average is actually here, way to the left. And that sounds strange to our ears, but what ends up happening is that 80% of the contributors have contributed a below average amount. That sounds strange because we expect average and middle to be about the same, but they're not at all. This is the math underlying the 80-20 rule. Right? Whenever you hear anybody talking about the 80-20 rule, this is what's going on. Right? The, uh, the, the 20 percent of the merchandise accounts for 80 percent of the revenue, 20 percent of the users use 80 percent of the resources. This is the shape people are talking about when that happens. Institutions only have two tools, carrots and sticks. And the 80% zone is a no carrot, no stick zone. The, the, the costs of running the institution mean that you cannot take on the work of those people easily in an institutional frame. The institutional model always pushes leftwards, treating these people as employees. The institutional response is, I can get 75% of the value for 10% of the hires, great, that's what I'll do. 
The cooperative infrastructure model says, why do you want to give up a quarter of the value? If your system is designed so that you have to give up a quarter of the value, re-engineer the system. Don't take on the cost that prevents you from getting to the contributions of these people. Build the system so that anybody can contribute at any amount. So the, the coordination response asks not how are these people as employees, but rather what is their contribution like? Right? We have over here Psycho Milt, a Flickr user who's contributed one and only one photo titled Iraq. And here's the photo. Right. Labeled bad day at work. Right. So the question is, do you want that photo, yes or no? The question is not, is Psycho Milt a good employee? And the tension here is between institution as enabler and